Good morning guys, it's Jeremy here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this logo for a pizza company. And the reason why I wanted to do this is because I got a flyer in my mail. You know how you always get those local businesses, you know, putting stuff in your mailbox. And this is from like a pizza company. And I didn't like the logo, it looked pretty bad. And the menu didn't, wasn't really that desi designed well. So I decided to redesign the logo and you can see here, it's um, Acropolis. So Acro Ac Acropolis is like in um, in Greece, the city. And it's got one of those like Pantheon things. So I think that's where they got the ID. But you can see it's like gradients and it's like different, like the shadows and it's just not readable and it's, it's weird. And yeah, I think we can improve it. So came up with this design, as you can see here, just slight improvements, um, you know, just to make it more simple, more clean, um, as well as look more sophisticated. And yeah, so let's create it. So first up, what you wanna do is you wanna make a type or, so this is just getting a bunch of fonts that you could feel will fit this type of design. I didn't wanna go for the script font, I just felt like that was too, um, you know, too playful uh, and fun. So I wanted to, choose a bit of a sophisticated font so i just chucked a diff bunch of different fonts um a lot of these are paid fonts but you know you can find free fonts on defont and font squirrel and stuff so this one is monkenberg uh, american auto andy's new um coco goose i kind of like this above and beyond script but it's a bit messy um not really readable so i, I didn't choose that and then a couple other ones as well Silbilla and Corsa. So the reason why I liked, I kind of liked these fonts here in the middle. Um, especially because you can see how the K here, it's got like custom K um, with the slab feel and, and you know, a nice um, curve there. So I really like this. It gave a feel of like a grease feel um, of like Mediterranean. So that's why I selected one of these fonts and I decided to go for this one here which is Silvia Pro and it's got a whole bunch of different weights there um, which is super cool. So then I picked that and once I did that um, I put it on a slant so let's start to create this out. Let's bring this down here. So once you've picked your font that you like um, just type it out uh, Acropolis and bring this I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift scale that down and then what I'm gonna do is go to the left hand side and you can see the sheet tool if you right click on this little tool here next to the scissors you'll get three options and i'm going to click shear and what this allows me to do is it allows me to shear this so i can just go to the right corner of the s and then i want to hold shift and just drag up up or down as you can see there so i'm going to drag up i don't want to shear it too much so just about there that looks right and i'm just going to duplicate it again like that Cool. Now, once we've got that, we want to create this, um, the Pantheon thing. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to press M for the rectangle tool. It's also located on the left here. I'm going to drag our one pillar and I'm going to use, press shift X to flip it, the fill to the stroke. And I'm going to go about, um, eight points. I might make this a little bit thicker. I'm going to hold Alt and shift and drag it across. And once you do that, let go and then press Command D or Control D, and this will duplicate it a couple times. So now we've got the, the first part done. Now we're gonna do the roof. So for the roof, I'm gonna create a box. So once again, press M for the rectangle tool. I'm gonna to click and drag a box here. And you wanna try and center it. So an easy way to center it is group these pillars together, Control G. Or we can go object group top here and then i'm going to select everything and then make sure your selection is on the um selection and then just click this middle button here at the top and it should center it all so now what i want to do is start to bring this down make sure your smart guides are on so you can see mine wasn't on just then so you can see Control U is the shortcut for that. So now if I do it again, it should snap to the actual point. As you can see there, all the paths are snapped, which is what we want. So I'm gonna leave this a bit thick so you can see we can put our little pizza thing in there. So I'm gonna press select the, the box 
press P and then find this center point. So you can see this uses, use that center anchor point as a guide. Click once on the path here. And then I'm gonna select this anchor point. And just by pressing the up arrow key, it's going to make give us this shape there. I'm also gonna select these three anchor points on the top of the roof and just scale this down. I'm then gonna press L for the ellipse tool as you can see on my left hand side and I'm just going to create a circle scale that down what I'm going to do is delete this anchor point here on the bottom so we just have an ellipse here I'm just going to scale it down and bring it to the point where it meets this black stroke here and I'm going to scale it up so cool way to do this is you go to the anchor point here and holding shift and just dragging up so we can scale up that pizza bit you can see my scale strokes are on, which is I don't want that on. So you can turn it off by going to your transform menu. If you don't know how to go to your menu, menus, you just go to window and go down to transform. And I'm just going to press eyedropper tool and select the same size as the other strokes. From this point, we want to make um, pizza slices. So what I will do, I'll press P for the pen tool, holding shift, I'll make one stroke. I'll press R for the rotate tool, locate the point here. I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to do about 30 degrees or 35 degrees is fine as well. I'm going to press copy and I'll press Control D again. So we've got these two slices there. I'll select these two strokes, press O for the reflect tool. It's also on the left here, as you can see my mouse, right next to um, this tool where the, it's got two like triangles and next to the circle there. I'm gonna press O and then what I wanna do, holding Alt again, I can click on this middle section or where this middle line is. And then you can see I want to reflect vertically and then just press copy and that should duplicate it and bring it on the other side. So you can see there, now we've got all these pizza slices. So what I can do is just get my ellipse tool again by pressing L and, you know, make give it some pepperonis. <laughs> As you can see here. Just like that. And if you wanna make like a bigger one and cut it off, to make it look like it's part of the, the line. What you can do is just make it a bit bigger. Select um, the path and you can see here, I wanna cut this off. So what I'll do is just minus that off by pressing Shift M, which is the Shape Builder tool. I always use that tool. And then if you hold minus, you can just click and drag and minus that shape off. And because the it was overlapped, this circle was overlapped from this path, it can cut off the excess, which was there. Move it around, don't want to make it too crowded. Just to keep it simple. Okay, so now I want to go down here. I'm going to make another box. And I'm going to hold shift, select the top box, and I'm going to use the align tool up the top here. See my align options. Once again, it should be set to align selection, and then click the middle button. First, when you select it, make sure you um, you hold shift, you select it. Sorry, you don't have to hold shift, but so once you've selected it, what you want to do is left click once on the top section. So that means it's going to align the bottom to the top box and then click the middle button and it should make it aligned. What I also want to do is sort of round off these edges. So I'll select this box, get my direct selection tool, click this and drag it like that. Cool, that's looking good. I'm gonna grab the font now and I'm gonna drop the font to about a bold or a medium even. And I'm gonna scale it down. Shortcut is Control Shift and the left, um, if you press comma, then it should scale it down. So I'm gonna make, it, make them all caps. So we've got pizza, pasta, ribs 
and then I'm just I'm just gonna optically align them. I'm gonna use my eyedropper tool. I'm using the pen tool just to make a stroke, and then dropping using the eyedropper tool just to make it the same size as the other strokes. And then I'm just gonna hold Alt Shift duplicate this one over here. And then what I can do, I can select all these, and I can get back to the top. And if you do this button here, it's like distribution. If I also show you on this here, distribute objects, this is gonna pretty much distribute them evenly across. And then I can just bump it using the arrow keys to do that. And optically you can see there's more space in here because this word is shorter. So, you know, you might have to bump those a bit. Like that. Sweet, it's looking awesome. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab this, bring it down like that, maybe scale it up. I don't want this too tall, so I'm gonna use, press A for the direct selection tool. I'll select all these points and then press the arrow key down and I can hold shift to make it quicker, like bump it further, just to shorten it. I'm also gonna make this roof a bit more pointy and I'll round it off so you can see these little white circles in CC and I can just drag that and round that off. Looking super cool. Might scale this down a bit. So great, it's looking good now. But what we wanna do, we wanna add a bit of color and we wanna add some shadows so it can, you know, it doesn't conflict with the actual um, lines in the back. So what I'm gonna do is go to my type tool and click create outlines. This is gonna turn them all into shapes as you can see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it. I'm going to press Control C, Control F to duplicate. And I'm going to bump it to the left and bump it down a bit like this. I'm going to change the color just so you guys can see. I'm going to press con Control Left Square Bracket on the keyboard just to bring it down. And if they are behind the strokes, as you can see there, just select them both and press Control Right Square Bracket but also hold shift as well, so it makes it go to the front. You can also go to object and all the tools are here. So you got, you know, grouping tools. Um, you, also, you also got the range tools here, so you can arrange it. So what I'm gonna do now is select the black top part. Go, go to object, path, offset path. I'm gonna press preview. And then I'm just gonna drop it down a little bit. Six points is fine, I'll press okay. And then what I wanna do is I wanna go to object, compound path, make. I'm just gonna change the color so you guys can see what's happening. So you can see we should have a duplicate and we should have the original which is the black one. So this duplicate, what I'm gonna do, because it's a compound path and I'm gonna make the bottom of compound path as well all these brown points so if I click it object compound path make and then it might get rid of the color so I'll just put the color back on and what I'll do I want to make sure that it's ungrouped so you can see it, the black and the the light color is connected I don't want that to happen so I'm just gonna select it and ungroup it by pressing Control shift G and it should ungroup it there all right, and I'm just going to bring it to the back. And I'll just bring that up. And what I'm going to do now. So what we want to make sure is that you want to make sure that the brown part is below the lighter part. So you can see here, you want to make sure that it's on the bottom. I'm going to select this. Click the brown one holding shift. And then go to my Pathfinder tool. You can also find it by going Window Pathfinder. And you want to select this minus front, which is the second one. And it should minus the light color from that brown color there. So then I'm, I'm going to just bring it up to the front. So there you can see how it's like cut it off. So it gives like a nice edge. So that's looking pretty cool. You can see I bumped it up a bit too much. So I can always go back and redo it by just pressing Control Z and whatever. 
but that's totally cool. So I'm just gonna make sure that it's all selected. So I'm just gonna quickly lock, lock these parts here, select this, group it together, and just drag it down. Just like that. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna quickly ungroup this. I'm gonna select all these black parts. Make sure it's grouped. I wanna to go to object, path. I'll go offset path again and press preview. This time I wanna bump it up a lot. As you can see there, not too much, but like until the parts are connected. I'll press okay. I'll go to my pathfinder tool and click the first button, which joins them together. I'll make it white and I'll bring that white to the back. I'll make sure it's ungrouped, so Control shift g or Command-Shift-G, and that should ungroup it. I'll bring that to the back. And then now, and, but I just want to bring it up above that, so I'll select it all. Control-Shift-Right square bracket. Um, this should be... I'll do this instead. I'll just select this and bring that to the back. Okay, cool. Now you can see, oh. just unclick that, now I'll select all that. Now you can see how the pillars won't interfere with the actual design there, which is pretty good, pretty neat. Cool, now what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna drop a background there, make it light. Using some of these swatches, I've got some color palettes that I've already used before from Adobe Colors. You can find some on Color Hunt or Colors with two O's .co, and you can find heaps of palettes there. Um, I'm going for like goldy and cream and brown. And so. What I'm going to do, because I'm using color now, I can get rid of this white and make it the same color as the background. I'll also, you can see this is not grouped, so I'm going to just quickly group these letters together. Make it gold. I can make that brown a bit darker, so I can go to my color palette, press the little hamburger menu, and go to HSB, which is hue, saturation, brightness. And I can make that a bit darker. I'm also just going to quickly group this, double click, so I can go to isolation mode. I'll press Y to get the magic wand, and I'm going to select these black strokes, and I'm going to make it brown, as you can see, or we can make it the same color as this. Make the same color as that brown. I can even select... Make, make sure things are ungrouped. If you can't select things, you just have to ungroup it and regroup it. So I'll, I'll lock this, which is Control 2. I'll select these and I'll make it this darker color. So I'll just select that. I'll make a new swatch. Then I'll go back, make sure it's on my stroke color. Press that. And then I'll bring it down below that. So, you know, there's heaps of ways we can play around <coughs> with the colors. But there we have it. So you can see this is the old one. If I grab it. This is the old one. And this is the newer version that we created. And then we can always go and do the opposite color. And then I'll just go and change the strokes to white. Change this, that, that color. And just make everything opposite. As you can see, you can even make that white if you want. Just like that. So you can see overall improvement. This is a fun little project to do. It's always good to do for practice. 
And, you know, maybe you have a friend or you have a family member that has a little restaurant or have a little business. Ask them if you can just redesign their logo. Like, why not? You know, it's good for practice for you and you can build relationships through that. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments below if this was helpful or not. Don't remember to always subs to <clears throat> remember to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell because you will get updates on new content coming out every week. Thanks guys for watching. I'll leave it with you guys and remember to always be creating something awesome. Have a great week.